Okay, everyone. Um, this is gonna be the tutorial for how to use Paint Shop Pro with Palace, and it explains all the Palace palette and stuff like that. First, you're gonna want to download Paint Shop Pro. You can either get it from the site, but you have to go through like 10 minutes of registering, and then like eight hours of downloading, or you can get it like from a torrent site, which is probably smarter, maybe. But I got it from the website, and my trial's gonna run out soon. But I gotta change the date back so I can keep it. And I'm just gonna go to Paint Shop Pro and open it right now. Well, that. And first, we're going to find a sprite sheet. By the way, it's probably smart. We always use, if you want a Sonic, always use the Sonic Advanced ones because that's what we use on Palace. And if you want to fit in, then I'd wear one of those. Okay, here, here we go. It's not very good, but okay. Okay, now we're going to get on to pa uh, Paint Shop Pro. And we're going to open up the sprite sheet. Uh, I think I saved it something with an S. Okay, here we go. Okay, here he is. This is a dumbass shadow. And what we're going to do first is, once you've got your palette, you can download it from our website. And you put it in like C slash program files slash Corel slash paint shop pro slash palette. And then you can go into palette and then load palette. And you're going to come up to, here it is, it's just called palette for crying out loud. PSP palette right there. And you, for sprites only, for sprites like this, if you want to click nearest color matching, and that'll make it see look now it's more suitable for colors on Palace. Otherwise, you're going to get some funky colors that Palace won't accept, so it's going to look really bad. And now you can put it in Palace by control Q that's what I always do then you have to wear it and then you can take it off and after that then you can edit it and to get rid of the back the background what I do is I uh, click the erase button and then I hold else so it brings up the paint fill and I just click it to get rid of all the little That's not very nice. Anyway, we're gonna get rid of all the little green so it looks nice. Uh, that seems to be good. That's fine. Uh, after that, you wanna be you wanna center your prop, and you always wanna do this. You can do that with the arrow keys. What you wanna do is move it so the feet is at least touching the bottom of the mouth and once you do that wear it by double clicking it just like that uh, that's how you, there you go that's how you set it up after you've got your standing position then you can make everything else and you gotta make sure it's all centered And it, so that means when you go to another animation or whatever it would be on top of the other one so it's not like all over the screen let's use this one since I'm not even using like a good shadow sheet control Q wear it and take it off and I'm gonna go into edit get rid of the background and Centering it so it fits nicely on top of the other one, and when I wear it, it won't see, it won't appear as if I'm like moving too far from like the spot. 
So if I save this to a key, for instance. Uh, okay. And then I save the other one to a key. And then I press the two in order. It won't seem like I'm moving so far. You know, you have to do that with all of them. That's what I do with all mine, and they've all flow together real nicely. So I really don't have to move much, and it already looks like I'm, like, staying in the same spot. And then, a way to make things easier when you flip them, it's Control shift h for horizontal, and Control shift v for vertical. And you always want to flip everything in your set, so there's like so you can have two sides of it, because that's really important. And you want to make sure when you flip them, they're not off center like that one. You want them to be right on top of each other. So they're just like that. There we go. So when you wear one, and then you go to the other, it's not like you're flying to like the, a different position on the screen. That's how you want to make sure everything's all in order. And that's also how you put things outside of Paint Shop Pro on the palace when you're using sprites. Another thing to do on Paint Shop Pro is importing pictures. And you can import and wear pictures on palace like that like that's me playing guitar right at a concert those are just some pictures from that and then there's a picture of me also you can turn off names anyway to do that you can go to any picture on your computer or you can find one on the internet and then save it to your computer well it has to be from your computer anyway so I'll just go find one of knuckles or whatever and here's one right here. Okay, that's nice. This one then. Okay, I'm gonna take this picture. Save that. I don't even know what I saved it as. Let me check. Okay, artwork, so A. Okay, here it is. Now, first thing I want to do is always resize first. And the image limit on Palace is 132 going both ways. So you want to make the bigger one 132. Seems pretty small right here, I know. But anyway. 1 you do that, then you go to Palette and then Load Palette. And now, you don't want nearest color matching because that would screw up the image and it would make it look too much different. You choose error diffusion. Remember, this is only with pictures. See, now it looks like it didn't change much, but it actually did. And now I can import it on Palace. That's the magic of the error diffusion. If you do error diffusion with sprites, it'll screw it up so it's not easy to edit. It'll look like just a bunch of random pixels with pictures it works so it's a good thing there's two you can only wear nine props at once but if you make it 132 pixels going the biggest way then you, you'll wear the whole thing it all depends on how you crop it getting rid of the background when you do this might be a little bit harder because the edges are probably like that so, with pictures you just don't wanna, but with sprites you can.